Middle Tennessee led by that young woman, Anastasia Hayes. Only Caitlin Clark averaged more points per game this season. Meanwhile, Tennessee led by the dynamic scoring duo of Renaya Davis and Ray Burrell as Tennessee wins the tip. And we are underway in Austin, Texas. Middle Tennessee starting in man-to-man -man defense and look for that. Look for Tennessee to try to take advantage of their size, bursting up inside. Well, that's the interesting thing here, Rebecca. And it was something both Tennessee head coach Kelly Harper as well as Middle Tennessee head coach Rick Ensel mentioned to us the contrast of styles between these two teams. Inside the layup is good in Tennessee. Gets on the board first as we take a look at the Capital One starting lineups. Anastasia Hayes with her sister Aislinn in the backcourt. Alexis Whittington, Deja Cage, and then Courtney Whitson round out the starting lineup as it's going to stay here with Middle Tennessee. You see Anastasia Hayes on the first possession driving to the basket. That's what she does so well, and she gets to the free throw line, or if she gets multiple defenders, she will kick out to all the three-point shooters she has around her. Hayes kept the pivot foot down. Found her sister, and the little drumper is no good from straight on, and the rebound snared by Burrell. A foul going to go against Middle Tennessee. Alexis Whittington called for the personal. Keep an eye and already on two team fouls on Middle Tennessee. Yeah, keep an eye on that, Ryan, because this is a team that does not go bit very deep. They like to play their starters a lot of minutes. You see the Tennessee starting five, the big duo in the front court of Kush Kittawa and Tamari Key. Kelly Harper telling us she wants one of those two women on the floor at all times. Burrell using the key screen. The little pull-up jumper is good. Walker able to connect. And Tennessee off to a 4-0 lead. Hayes, a hop, the kick out, a three. No good from Whittington. And the rebound taken by Tennessee. Whittington, a 31% shooter from three. As Burrell was able to just sneak it across. Push Kittawa using her size, barreling in, and that's going to be an offensive foul. Great defense when you're giving up size the way Whittington is here. She moves her feet, stays between the player and the basket. And it's interesting because in their conference championship game, Middle Tennessee went against Rice, who has 6'9 Kim Mulkey on, I'm sorry, Mulkey on their team. And, and they had to deal with size and size for a good way to help them get ready for this game. Nancy Hayes Mulkey, turns the corner. Could not quite finish off the window. And Tennessee quickly into the front court. Walker trying to get it to Key, fronted nicely by Whitson, and then coming up with a steal is Cage. Waiting for help here. A deep three is short from Aislinn Hayes. Looked like Little Tennessee might have had an opportunity in transition that they pumped the brakes on. Instead, Burrell can't rim it in. The offensive board and put back from Jordan Walker, her second field goal of the opening quarter. And that's where Tennessee is always so dangerous. They are terrific on the offensive glass. Rick Insel told us we have to get to the defensive boards. We cannot give Tennessee second and third opportunities. The little scoop shot won't go from Aislinn. Rebound cleaned up by Davis. Renaya Davis projected to be the number four pick in this year's WNBA draft. An All-American honorable mention candidate. Straight on three, rims off, offensive rebound. There it is again. He couldn't finish though, and Whitson collects it for Middle Tennessee. Anastasia Hayes gets her first bucket to drop. That's where she is so good. If she gets a step on the defender, she can get it off the glass, finishes inside so well. Leads the nation in free throws attempt and made on the season. Conference USA Player of the Year. Is that jumper is good from Chris Kittowa? Showing some range. 
Tennessee doing a nice job. Balance on the offensive end here early. Taking the shots that they want to get. Getting to the offensive glass. A three is good. Anastasia Hayes. He takes plenty of them. Shoots just 23.5% from three. But connects on her first attempt from downtown. That's huge for her. In her last six games, Ryan, she was only two of 20 from the three-point line. Always a bonus when she can hit from deep. Burrell turns the corner and lays it in. Ray Burrell using the size and strength and a little speed as well. Ray Burrell has been so consistent all season long for the Lady Vols. You know what you're going to get from her night in and night out on the offensive end of the floor. Kelly Harper talked about Ray Burrell being a little beat up during the SEC tournament. So a little break here before the NCAA tournament was good for her. As Walker finds the trailer, the runner is good for Bernaya Davis. Nice response here from Tennessee. A 12-5 first quarter lead in this first round elimination matchup between Middle Tennessee State and Tennessee. Squeezed inside, and Hayes could not finish. Out of bounds, it's going to stay with Middle Tennessee. As we step aside, Hayes, get one to drop here, Rebecca. Hayes getting inside for the Lady Raiders, and then Renaya Davis getting it done in transition as well. The first round of the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship on ABC is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? An early lead for Tennessee over Middle Tennessee State in Austin, Texas, where Holly Rowe is standing by. Well, you're seeing an early burst of scoring from Middle Tennessee's Anastasia Hayes. That's why she believes she can play against this Lady Vol team because she played against them Early in her career, she was a McDonald's All-American, played for the Lady Vols for one season before being dismissed. She has competed against many of the young ladies here on the floor, and you can see she is very unafraid here playing for Middle Tennessee. Yeah, Holly was the SEC sixth woman of the year as a freshman in the 17-18 season with Tennessee. And is the only member of Middle Tennessee who has played in an NCAA tournament game as Davis calmly and coolly knocks down the jumper. Tennessee playing with a lot of patience and execution on the offensive end of the floor, but I've really been impressed with them defensively. They were w wondering if they could handle this. The penetration kick, uh, penetration drive and kick, and they've done a great job with it so far. Middle is only Jordan Horston. Wow. Horston went coast to coast, couldn't quite finish. On the attack, Hayes lays it in. Aislinn Hayes with her first bucket of the game. Rebecca talked about the minutes. Middle Tennessee will often play just five or six players in their rotation. Aislinn Hayes second in the nation in minutes. Anastasia is fourth in the nation in minutes. Good D on the interior there to deny Key a chance here for Middle Tennessee. Anastasia, quick burst and hop into the hoop. And one of the reasons the lane was so wide open is that Middle Tennessee plays a spread offense. So Key was out of the lane defending on the perimeter as she scores there. What a gorgeous setup from Jordan Horston. Horston, the sophomore, out of Columbus, Ohio was the MVP of the McDonald's All-America game a couple years ago. Here comes Davis flicking it ahead. Burrell in transition, no. And a loose ball foul is going to go against Tennessee and Key. Just a beautiful pass from Horston to Key, and that's where Key has the advantage with her size, is on the offensive end of the floor when she's in the paint. Kelly Harper, one of two coaches to take four different schools to the NCAA tournament. Jim Foster, the other. Tennessee, the only team to compete in all 39 
NCAA tournaments. Kelly Harper won three of them as a player with Tennessee and said, you know, she's been so focused on the small picture and preparing for the game that she hadn't really thought about the big picture, but enough people have asked her now about getting to coach her alma mater, Tennessee, in the NCAA tournament that she did say, yeah, you know what? When I let it hit me, it is pretty cool. Pretty spectacular with the rich tradition that you have with the Tennessee Lady Vols. Orson unable to hit the chance here for Middle Tennessee, down just five. Cage in the corner, connects on a three. And now you see Middle Tennessee settling in on the offensive end of the floor, getting dribble penetration, getting the kicks out for three-point shots. That's what they do so well. A 9-2 Middle Tennessee run. Davis will fire. Good response there from Renaya Davis. Renaya Davis has been playing terrific basketball the last month and a half of the season. Struggle a little bit in the SEC tournament in their game against South Carolina, but other than that, she has been money. Nine points in this first quarter for Davis. How about the fluidity of Horston? And then the dish, but that's gonna be a travel on Walker, who took a little bunny hop into her delivery. Coming off the on-ball screen, the little pitch to Renaya Davis. Just a great shot by her. Only 27% on the season from the three-point line, but she has a smooth stroke. When Coach Harper was talking about Davis, said she's at her best when she's scoring in a variety of ways, getting to the offensive glass. Said the great thing is we don't have to run plays for her, as Hayes able to finish between two. She said we don't have to run plays for her, but we do. <laughs> <laughs> but she said she can get the garbage, garbage stuff done. Gets into the off, gets offensive rebounds, gets her hands on basketballs. Follow won't go. Another chance here. Horston has been a factor since coming off the bench for Tennessee. Two for one opportunity if Middle Tennessee wants it. Aislinn Hayes gets to the cup and lays it in. Right now, Middle Tennessee, the 12 of their points are in the paint. It's all off a of dribble penetration. Tennessee now having a tough time keeping those players in front of them. Tennessee can hold for one here. A 21-18 lead in this first round game. Renaya Davis, two seconds left in the quarter. Her jumper, no. And that'll end it for the first quarter. Tennessee, a three-point lead after one. Someone goes home tonight. Becca. Hi, Maria. Coach, start of the second quarter. And Middle Tennessee has found its footing after a tough start. A one-point game now. Tennessee, the three seed. Middle Tennessee, the 14th. 15th meeting all time between these in-state schools. And a 14-0 edge for the Lady Vols entering this one as it's turned over by Horston. Taken back, though, by Tennessee. Good effort on the ground, and it leads to a bucket for the Lady Vols. Great hustle by Tennessee. And the last time down the floor for Middle Tennessee, Kashi Kiskidawa, the 6'4 post player, had to come out on the perimeter to defend, and Middle Tennessee was able to go right by her. This time she sits back, and instead they hit the three. That's the quandary for the big when you have to defend a smaller shooter on the perimeter. And this is the contrast in styles that Kelly Harper was very weary of. She admitted, yeah, this probably wouldn't have been the matchup we prefer when it comes to the way Middle Tennessee plays. Playing five out, shooting as many threes as they do. They've tied it now at 23. Chris Kittawa from 17. No rebound taken by Middle Tennessee. And that's the shot Middle Tennessee wants Tennessee taking. That's out of bounds off of Tennessee after the rejection and the tip. Going to stay here with the Lady Raiders. 
So now you see Kishkidawa. She's sagging back in the lane. Winnington very capable of hitting from the perimeter. The previous possession, Kishkidawa was out on her and she drove by. Catch, fire, and pick from three. Woodson buries it from downtown. And it's Middle Tennessee who's in front here in the second. So now for Tennessee to take advantage of their size, to keep Kushkidawa on the floor, look to her inside where she does have the advantage. Burrell can't answer a 10-2 Middle Tennessee run, their first lead of the game. Hey, second leading scorer in the nation on the Iowa's Caitlin Clark averaged more points per game than Anastasia Hayes. Hayes flicks it back out. Whittington, the extra feed. Shot clock down to seven. Cage on the drive. Bodies in, couldn't finish. And the rebound taken by Tennessee. Davis. Finding Horston, the fluid spin, and drew a whistle. Jordan Horston has come off the bench with outstanding energy. How about the Women's Basketball Hall of Famer, Rick Insel, the head coach of Middle Tennessee. Likes his team to get to the line, to shoot the three. You see their fifth in Division I in free throw rate, ninth in three-point rate. And Rebecca, this is somebody who has meant so much to the game of women's basketball, especially in Tennessee. Something Kelly Harper was talking about with us. And Kelly Harper played for Rick Insel in AAU three seasons during high school. She competed against him in high school when he was the head coach at Shelbyville, and then she played for him in AAU. Put the basketball in her hands, and she, and she liked that. Exactly. Rick talked about, hey, she was a winner. Even though she was playing with all her high school rivals, she just wanted to help out however she could and gave her the ball so that she could. Walker, the Euro step across her body beautifully on the finish. And so it'll be seen now from Tennessee. They've gone to a zone defense where it should be easier for them to not allow dribble penetration inside. They simply couldn't do it in their man-to-man -man defense with their bigs. Aislinn Hayes buries a three. And after a cold start from downtown, Middle Tennessee has begun to hit their attempts. That three from Walker won't go, but putback is good. Renaya Davis there for the follow. 11 points for Davis in this first half. And that is absolutely where Tennessee is so good, getting to the offensive glass. They average just over 16 offensive rebounds per game. Cage left alone. No. And a great job by Tennessee. They had four bodies on the glass around Whitson. Tied at 29 in this first round matchup between Tennessee and Middle Tennessee. Horston can't hit the three. Another offensive rebound for Tennessee. No follow there, though, from Walker. Hayes, nifty crossover. Into the corner, Whittington can hit the three in the weak side board to Horston. Oh, what a dime! Horston to the cutting, Davis. Beautiful finds for two. How good has the sophomore Jordan Horston been in this game? The 6'2 guard has vision, the ability to deliver the pass. She has been terrific finding her open teammates. Four points, four assists, four rebounds in 10 minutes off the bench for Horston. The floater rims in, plus the foul for Anastasia Hayes. Anastasia Hayes so good at getting inside, drawing contact. This is going to be her first trip to the free throw line, but as I said earlier, leads the nation in free throw attempts her game. She gets there just around 11 times a game. Hayes has played 40 minutes in four straight games entering this one. 
A semifinalist for the Becky Hammond Mid-Major Player of the Year Award. And I thought it was interesting, Rebecca, when we talked to Rick Insel about her, he said, you know, I coached Alicia Clark, the outstanding two-time WNBA champion with the Seattle Storm, just moved over to the Washington Mystics, said, I coached her, but I didn't take time to enjoy her. He said, with Anastasia Hayes, she's one of those rare air players as well, and I want to make sure I enjoy her. And he said, you don't get many great ones. She's a great one. I'm not just going to coach her. I'm going to enjoy watching her as well. Well, her team leads by one. 4.48 to go in the second of this first round matchup. So, ladies, I just want to wish you guys good luck today as you start your NCAA tournament journey. Um, just remember that when you go out there today, that it's 0-0 for everybody. Um, what happened in regular season doesn't matter. You guys have sacrificed, put in all the work to be on this stage. So go out there, enjoy it, compete, um, and go ahead and bring home that dub. Good luck. That is Alicia Clark coming to you live from Paris, France. So excited she was able to check in with us. She is the reigning WNBA champion with the Seattle Storm and will start her new career in Washington as a free agent this year. But guys, she was inducted into the Middle Tennessee Hall of Fame just a few months ago. She's one of the best, led the nation in scoring for two seasons, and she was so excited to send that shout out to these ladies. And I'm sure she's excited, Holly, to see her alma mater with a one-point lead under 430 to go on the second. Cage dove back into the play, came up with a steal. Hayes gets fouled, and that is what Anastasia Hayes does. Works her way to the free throw line. I give Middle Tennessee so much credit for what they are able to do on the defensive end of the floor. Stopping Tennessee's ability to get the ball in the paint and then taking it the other way. Middle Tennessee started this game 2 for 12 from the floor. They are 11 for 18 since. And erased a nine-point deficit. Have a one-point second quarter lead. Coming up in the half, it's the AT&T 5G Halftime Report. Maria Taylor, Andy Landers in the studio going to take a look at Idaho State and Kentucky. We heard Maria tell us about Idaho State getting off to an early lead on Kentucky, which they still have now in the second quarter. Interested to see what Ryan Howard will do in this tournament. We're also going to examine Paige Beckers, the UConn freshman phenom, all coming up at the half. Deep catch, and Key gets fouled. Tamari Key is going to shoot two. And I think Tennessee needs to do more of that. If you're going to have Tamari Key in the basketball game on the defensive end, when they were in man-to-man, -man, she had to play out on the perimeter. Well, she still has the size advantage offensively. The direct entry pass to her is there. Hey, coming up next on ABC, the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. The first round continues on ABC with Jackson State, second-seeded Baylor. All games also available on the ESPN app. Every game on the ESPN family of networks for this Women's NCAA Championship. So please, hang with us for the next few weeks. We are so excited to bring all the action to you and for you to watch these young women shine. Cage, surveying, six to shoot. Hayes, three to shoot through the lane, got denied by Key, and a shot clock violation. Tamori Key, the outstanding shot blocker, came up with a big rejection there. And against Tennessee's zone, there aren't as many open looks from Middle Tennessee now, but I think Hayes can still get that dribble penetration into the paint. She's just going to need to do it a little sooner on the shot clock. Davis, quick first step. Tried to squeeze between two. Loose ball. Taken by Tennessee. Another great look from Horston. Key doesn't get it to drop, but is fouled. And Tamari Key is going to shoot two after the foul on Rayla Booth. Usually the only player to come off the bench for Middle Tennessee and get some minutes. Yeah, and she's the one player who has size at 6'3", but now twice she's picked up fouls 
as Tamari Key has gotten the ball on that left block. Now coming out of the game with those two fouls. Tamari Key, a one of just seven players in Division I to average at least 2.75 blocks last year and this year. She's number one in career blocks per game average in the history of the Lady Vols. Just under three blocks per game for the sophomore. Catch, fire, no. Rebound, Horston. Horston has been dropping dimes in his first half. Another one there, and the roll in from Burrell's Bunny. Fifth assist of the half for Horston. What a difference Jordan Horston has made here in this game. And it's not been by scoring, but by setting her teammates up with e for easy buckets. Hayes nearly lost it. Good hands from Horston. Two-point Tennessee lead in this first-round matchup. And a foul against Horston. Horston coming down. She looks one way and delivers the basketball the other. At 6'2", she's already got great vision and can deliver the ball on the money when her teammates run with her. She was ESPN's preseason SEC emerging player. And she has been a massive difference maker in this first half. Anastasia Hayes, what a quick first step. Had separation, instead finds Ritson on a three. And that's why I think they can have success against this Tennessee zone. A little bit earlier on in the shot clock that time, she gets the dribble penetration, draws the defense, and then kicks. That's what Middle Tennessee has done well all season long. Second three of the game for Whitson. Shoots it at 37%. Her last four games, 50% entering this one. Comes up with a steal there. Seven turnovers now for Tennessee, just two for Middle Tennessee. They're one of the best teams in the nation at protecting the basketball. Anastasia Hayes working into Davis makes it in. 16 points for Anastasia Hayes here in the first half. Horston, another nice look. On the reverse, the layup is good for Ray Burrell. It's nice to have a big guard. Ray Burrell is 6'1", gets inside, he has a knack around the basket to finish. Cage, too strong. Rebound, Whittington. Tracked it beautifully. And another chance here for Middle Tennessee, a two-for-one opportunity. Hayes cutting through the lane, gets denied emphatically by Key. It springs Burrell all the way in. She's fouled by Deja Cage. Anastasia Hayes is the engine for her team. She dr drives in, gets the defense to commit, and can get it to an open teammate. She can also get to the rack herself. <laughs> At only 5'7", she is able to get it done against bigger defenders. Boise State in Memphis Square off Thursday at 9 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app in an NIT quarterfinals matchup. Catch all four games on ESPN Networks and visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Just a slight differential between game and shot clock. The Hayes sisters, Middle Tennessee's leading scorers, tied at 39. Shot clock at seven. Anastasia Hayes, the hesitation, the stop. Looking for help, couldn't squeeze it in, and that is a shot clock violation. Tennessee will have a little time to operate here before the end of the half. Middle Tennessee, the 14 seed. Tennessee, the three seed. Davis and Burrell, a combined 22 points in this first half. 
to lead Tennessee. Horston heaves it up, and that will do it after Tennessee got off to a nine-point lead. Middle Tennessee comes back to tie it at the half of this first-round matchup. Time for halftime with Maria Taylor and Andy Landers. All right, thank you so much. Start of the third quarter. Tennessee, the three seed. Middle Tennessee, the 14. And right away, good D from Middle Tennessee as Hayes got her hands on it. Tennessee able to flag it down. Nice cut from Burrell from 12, left it short. Rebound, and it's going to be an over-the-back call against Tennessee and Ray Burrell. Fifteenth meeting all time between these two schools. Tennessee holds a 14-0 advantage. Anastasia Hayes, 16 points in the first half, second leading scorer in the nation. Again, Tennessee in that zone, Rebecca. Yeah, and it worked well for the most part for them in the first half. I mean, they simply couldn't hang when they playing man-to-man -man in terms of their bigs getting out on the perimeter shooters. Cage ducks between two, tried to scoop it up, but not, and it's a shot clock violation as Middle Tennessee turns it over on their first possession. You know, that's something they did so well in the first half, Rebecca, just the lack of turnovers from Middle Tennessee, and that is normally part of the fabric of their game. They are fifth in the country when it comes to the lowest turnover rate. Unfortunately, on that last possession, it was a dead ball turnover. Maya <laughs> <laughs> Davis hits the shot with somebody right in her face. You have to take care of the basketball when you go against Tennessee because they thrive when they can turn you over and get out in transition, but they have not been able to do that yet so far in this game. 15 points for Davis. Tennessee back in front by two. Third quarter action of this first round game. Hayes, the breakdown, the flip doesn't roll in. Rebound taken by Burrell for Tennessee. Burrell weaving, kicking. Walker to back it out. Lob inside. He lays it in on the delivery. It's a that was point Tennessee edge. That was a great set by Tennessee. Instead of going high low, they had their big Kishkitawa in the left corner. She got the ball, saw over the defense. The help couldn't come. Beautiful pass into Key. Hayes high off the window. No, Whittington. Looked like Whittington had a good look and instead turned away from the hoop and lost it. Here comes Tennessee, exactly what Rebecca was talking about. In transition, Burrell traveled and Tennessee gives it right back. Tamari Key posting up hard. You see there, Kish Kush Kidua on the left corner. When you go in there and set a high low, it's very difficult to bring a help side defender. Hayes flips it out, and her sister, Aislinn Hayes, are able to maintain control. Seven to shoot. Cage. Shot clock fading again. Whittington with it at three, had to put it up, left it short. More good D from Tennessee at the start of this third quarter. And now a foul as Key is hit going to the rim, and she will shoot two. Tennessee has looked really good on the defensive end of the floor, Ryan. They're back with their big lineup. This time they're playing a zone, though, and with two bigs in there, you can take up more room, limiting Middle Tennessee's dribble penetration, getting out to the shooters in time. You know, we had the conversation with Kelly Harper, Rebecca, about Tennessee and just you know, what the, the broad scope of aspirations are for this tournament. She said, you know, the one thing that we've said throughout is, We've been in every game, except for in the SEC tournament against South Carolina, which she said, you know, throw that game out. We've been in every game. She said, so, yeah, you know, we, we certainly can lose those games, as we saw with the seven losses throughout the regular season. But 
we should feel confident. I think we do feel encouraged by the fact that we've been in every game with everybody, including the best teams in the nation. Yeah, without question. You can come into this game, coming to this tournament, feeling confident. Hayes comes up with the steal, and the possession arrow belongs to Middle Tennessee. And now it's up to Middle Tennessee to figure out how they can get good looks, not only against the Tennessee zone, but a Tennessee zone with a bunch of size. They had some success in that first half when Tennessee went zone, getting dribble penetration, kicking out to the three-point shooters. Those three-point opportunities have not been there so far here in the third quarter. Tennessee opened both halves on a 6-0 run. That's the score so far here in the third. It's a six-point Tennessee lead after this game was tied at 39 at the half. Hayes, little hesitation, and she gets down. Anastasia Hayes will shoot two. Look that time like Tennessee was back into a man-to-man -man defense, and all of their players, whoever's been guarding Anastasia Hayes, has had a hard time keeping her in front of them. Let's check in in Austin, Texas with Holly Rowe. Well, guys, there are 10 sets of sisters playing in the NCAA tournament, and the Hayes sisters today have been terrific. 24 points so far for Anastasia and Aislinn Hayes. Their family is here. You see Dad Arnett, Mom is here too, Sherry, and also their sister who played at Notre Dame 13 games this year but has gone into the transfer portal. Alacia is also here. This is a basketball family. Four sister hoopers. I like that sister sister act. <laughs> and we like Holly Rowe on site in Texas, ready to cover the women's championship throughout the next few weeks. You know Holly will be on top of everything. She always is. A six-point Tennessee lead after another bucket from Burrell. She has 11, 15 for Renaya Davis. Anastasia kicks it out, and as she did, a travel. In Middle Tennessee, Rebecca, we've already seen them turn it over as much as they did the entire first half here throughout the first few possessions of the third. Timeout take it. Tennessee, a six point lead in this first round game. Well, on Thursday, players and coaches pointed out the disparity between the men's and women's accommodations of the NCAA championships. Friday, NCAA members issued statements and apologies, and Saturday, upgrades were made to facilities, including added weights and machines. I'm sure very many of you are familiar with this story and the coverage it's gotten over the last few days, and, and nobody has been more on top of it than Holly Rowe, who is in San Antonio to cover it all. Well, guys, we were able to tour the new facilities. They were able to get this new weight room set up. There was a plan all along to have a weight room, but it would not begin until the Sweet 16. But once images came out from Indianapolis that the men had terrific weight room facilities, they said that is not fair. So the NCAA said, look, it was a miss. It was an operational miss. We own it. We have fixed it. And they're moving forward. But it opens up a great conversation for the lack of funding and the disparity of the women's budget compared to that of the men. And that is a good conversation that we need to keep having moving forward. Without question, Holly, it's clear that the NCAA had a miss in this situation. I'm glad they were able to quickly fix it, but at the same time, it's not going to be until next year where we truly see what lessons were learned to make sure that there's equitable treatment for both the women and the men. A 49-41 Tennessee lead in his first round matchup. Cage, that is a big three for Middle Tennessee. You heard Coach Landers talk about it at the half. Uh, Tennessee in the first half was doing a great job offensively, shooting 52%. Their issue was on the defensive end of the floor. Well, that's the first field goal here in the second half by Middle Tennessee. Tennessee's defense has been much better here in the third quarter. Chris Kittowa, another offensive rebound. Gobbled it up and put it back. Can you gobble up defensive rebounds, too, or just offensive rebounds, right? You know, that's a great point. Why is it only the offensive rebound that's a gobble? <laughs> I don't know. 
Cage. Oh, hey now. Air balls the three. Here comes Burrell. Gets it to drop. Ray Burrell in transition. 13 points now, 28 combined between Renaya Davis and Ray Burrell. And a bad the shot on the scoring. offensive end works like a turnover, Ryan. And that's what happened on the last possession. Cage, air ball, three. Tennessee able to go the other way quickly. Hayes can't finish. Here we go again in transition. Key missed the layup. Walker gets fouled and two free throws coming for Tennessee. After another miss, springs a break for the Lady Balls. Kushkinawa gobbling Goblin. it up. Yeah. <laughs> this is a problem. This is a float. Taking a look at the Riverwalk region of the NCAA Women's Championship. Coming up next on ABC, it'll be a two seed Baylor and 15 seed Jackson State. Beth Mowens, Renee Montgomery will have the call of that game. Winner of this game between Tennessee, Middle Tennessee, gonna play the winner, Michigan, Florida Gulf Coast. How about Baylor, Rebecca, and their prospects for this tournament? No, this is this Baylor team is playing as well as any team in the country, and they get it done on the defensive end of the floor. They lead the nation in field goal percentage defense. Nalissa Smith is a candidate for National Player of the Year, one of the best post players in the women's college game. Watch out for Baylor. Tennessee, meanwhile, with their largest lead of the game, and it just grew as Walker cleans up the deflection, and Tennessee has dominated this third quarter. A 10-0 edge in points in the paint thus far in this third for Tennessee. And another turnover from Middle Tennessee. Rebecca, that's something we saw just three times in the first half with Middle Tennessee, four turnovers already in the third quarter. And Ryan, not just turnovers, but they've had some bad shots that have less left Tennessee going the other way and getting easy transition baskets. Tennessee has done a much better job this half using their bigs, getting touches inside, taking advantage of the height that they have. Kush Kittawa doesn't get the roll. Rebound Davis keeps it alive for Tennessee. Burrell and Davis have combined for 28 of Tennessee's 56 points as Horston gives it away. That duo, by the way, the highest scoring duo for Tennessee since Shamika Holtzclaw and Tamika Catchings back in the 98-99 season. Pretty good company for Burrell <laughs> and Raniah Davis. The two bigs for Tennessee, Key and Kush Kittawa in the first half combined for seven points. Already here in the third quarter, they have combined for eight. Tennessee clearly has made it a point in the second half to get their bigs touches. That three is short from Whitson. Burrell, nice touch feed to Key, who definitely lays it in. Just much better job defensively by Tennessee here in this half. Middle Tennessee with only five points so far this quarter and another turnover. Horst in the no look, nearly taken away. And ooh, it's going to be Middle Tennessee ball. Looked like it had lasted Hayes, but no. Renaya Davis coming the other way, and Tamari Key, when you have your 6'5 post player running the floor, you reward her. Rebecca, you called it perfectly at the beginning of the quarter about Tennessee, how dangerous they are if they get out and run as Burrell checks out. Three fouls on Ray Burrell. And that's what we've seen, whether it's via turnover like that or missed shot, as you pointed out. Tennessee's been able to take advantage in this third quarter. Yeah, Middle Tennessee is just kind of falling apart a little bit. In the first half, they were able to get dribble penetration, move the ball around the perimeter. And as Tennessee, the Lady Vols have taken that away here in the third quarter. They're rushing, they're making bad passes, they're taking quick shots. Kush Kittawa, that's going to be an offensive foul against Kush Kittawa, her second personal. You know what, I'm all right. <laughs> if I'm 
Kelly Harper. You've got a big player with a huge size advantage inside. That's her second offensive foul this game, but she's only got two. That's all right. If you're going to pick up a foul, pick it up because you're going strong against a smaller defender. A 14-0 edge in the paint in the second half for Tennessee is finally Middle Tennessee gets their first points in the paint. Hayes was able to finish. Horston on the other end, no. The offensive rebound, put back, and the foul for Chris Kittawa. That's one of those instances where it's just not fair to have the size. She just reaches right over Hayes, gets the rebound, puts it back up. Big time energy from the Tennessee bench. I think I saw flex in there from Ray Burrell as well. <laughs> were you a big bench? I know you were almost never on the bench, Rebecca, but were you a big bench flexer for, for, for big buckets? What was your celebration? I, I would cheer, but that was before people were flexing. No one was flexing in my day, Ryan. <laughs> Davis short on a three. Kush Kittawa again. Can't get it to go. Burrell no. Kush Kittawa. Another try? My goodness, what work on the offensive glass from Tennessee. They have the possession arrow. This third quarter has been all about Tennessee Lady Vol basketball. They have gotten out in transition. They have gotten the ball inside to their bigs. They've been all over the offensive glass. Those are all of the things Tennessee has done well this season that has led to victories. A reminder, the winner of this game will play the winner of Michigan Florida Gulf Coast. Michigan a 17-10 lead. That game currently airing on ESPN2. How about the offensive rebounds for Tennessee now? 17 of them. The jumper from Burrell won't go. Chance to transition here for Middle Tennessee. Four on one and Horston. Whoa! Would have none of it. Absolutely perfect transition defense by Jordan Horston. She just waited, protected the basket, was going to see if it was going to be a shot or a pass. Get that out of here. Corner three is good for Aislinn Hayes. 12 points for the second leading score on Middle Tennessee. And now a travel from Tennessee. And Rebecca, one thing we saw from Middle Tennessee in that first half, they could take a punch. We're down nine early, started two of 12 from the floor, worked their way back, took the lead. Obviously, Tennessee has dominated the third, but a chance here for the Lady Raiders. Ideally for Middle Tennessee, if you can get some kind of dribble penetration or ball movement that ends up in a three. Hayes wanted a whistle, didn't get it. Burrell, two on one. Burrell lays it in. Beautiful move by Davis. Renaya Davis with 17 points. Burrell with 13, 30 combined for the dynamic duo. Corner three, rims off. And Davis secures the rebound. A 13-point Tennessee lead after three quarters. Looking to advance here in round one. <laughs> we take a look at the numbers most by a Lady Ball duo since Shamika Holtzball and Tamika Catchings, both Hall of Famers. Pretty incredible company for Davis and Burrell. Tennessee, a plus 18 in paint points, now a plus 16. A plus 23 on the glass in this game for Tennessee. And the comeback for Middle Tennessee is going to have to start on the defensive end of the floor. <laughs> you cannot give up threes, and you certainly have to get to the defensive glass. Darby buries the three. It's a 14-point Tennessee lead. Winner of this game will face the winner of Michigan and Florida Gulf Coast. As Anastasia Hayes, now two of two from downtown, has 21 points to lead the way for Middle Tennessee. Darby short that time, and the rebound out of bounds to Middle Tennessee. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, guys, most of the teams got here on Tuesday or Wednesday, so they had a lot of time in their room. Here's some of the things they were doing. Uh, getting some videos, apps, and, and help getting stretching in your room. Renaya Davis had a mini hoop set up that she was doing shots. 
a lot of TikTok. Check out the TikTok challenge. It is a women's basketball TikTok challenge. I think that's what most teams are doing in their rooms. Davis all the way in, lays it home, plus the foul. Renaya Davis, 19 points and a chance for 20 at the line. So dangerous out in transition. 6-2, the guard is smooth and fluid and scoring inside. We've seen that multiple times today, and I think I just need to make sure everyone understood. When Holly said she was doing shots in her room, she meant on the mini hoop. <laughs> What about Holly? Was Holly doing shots in her room of a different variety? That's a totally different story. <laughs> Thumbs up if there were shots, Hal. <laughs> Hazelin Hayes has it blocked by Key. Another chance in transition. Davis. And a blocking foul called against Middle Tennessee. Davis will shoot two. Women's NCAA Championship presented by Capital One continues at four. Over on ESPN, all four 16 versus one matchups. North Carolina, AT&T against NC State. Then Mercer, South Carolina, followed by High Point, UConn. And we cap tonight with Utah Valley and Stanford. All games also available on the ESPN app. All the number one seeds playing today, Ryan, and all of them won their conference championships, all of them playing really, really well coming into this NCAA tournament. But I tell you what, Tennessee has really impressed me today. They've been firing on all cylinders, in particular here in the second half. Their guards have come to play, getting contributions from their bigs, active on the defensive end of the floor. Kelly Harper has made some nice adjustments throughout the course of this game defensively. Tenth double-double this season for Renaya Davis, another turnover for Middle Tennessee. We also need to show some love to Jordan Walker, who has 13 rebounds in this game for Tennessee. Kelly Harper praises Walker's toughness, says she is nose first, and she's just an incredible rebounder for her size. She has shown it in this first round matchup as Key finishes on another beautiful delivery from Horst in her sixth assist of the afternoon. The guard play has been outstanding for Tennessee. You know, you talk about the contributions Walker has had, where Horston off the bench, and another great example of how she's been unselfish, finding open teammates inside. By the way, there's 13 rebounds for Walker, a career high. How about the ditch from Horston? I mean, comes in, pick and roll, gets at the height of her jump, and delivers it perfectly to key. I mean, Horston will really, check out. Really, really impressed Ryan today with Tennessee. Yeah, in a wide open tournament with their athleticism, their bigs as well as their big guards, they're a team to watch. Turning the corner, the layup is good, Ray Burrell. Nido Tennessee run. A 20-point lead, another chance in transition. It won't happen as Burrell is fouled by Hayes. But Tennessee has gotten their hands all around this game. Ray Burrell continues to be in attack mode, absorbs contact, finishes inside. We've seen that time and again from both Ray Burrell and Renaya Davis, their ability to get to the paint in transition and on dribble penetration in the quarter court. Davis around the screen from Key, and that's gonna be an offensive foul against Key. Boise State in Memphis Square off Thursday. Nine Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. NIT quarterfinal matchup. Rebound taken by Burrell. Burrell throws it a little too tall. The road to the Frozen Four ices up tonight at 7 Eastern with the NCAA 
men's ice hockey selection special on ESPNU and the ESPN app. Visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Do they gobble anything in hockey, Ryan? I think the goaltender certainly can gobble up the puck. <laughs> We saw Davis check out, 22 points for Davis. Darby the rebound, Tennessee in control. Little over six minutes to go, a 20 point lead. Push Kittawa, pushed baseline, flicks it out. Walker too strong. Burrell the rebound had to take it away. It's gonna stay here because Whitson was out of bounds as she got her hands on it. You know, anytime Tennessee is playing women's basketball, rebounding is a big part of the story. They're plus 12 on the season, on the glass. Today, plus 28. They have 28 more rebounds than Middle Tennessee. Burrell hits the jumper. Well, and Rebecca, that was such a key for Rick Insel when we talked with him. Just wanting to make the glass a little more manageable, especially the offensive glass. The Tennessee 18 offensive rebounds, and there is that disparity, a plus 28 overall as Hayes gets fouled, and will shoot two. And it's not just the bigs for Tennessee, their entire team, we've talked about how their guards have size. They are relentless offensively, hitting the offensive glass. Defensively, they can corral rebounds. They have size at just about every position. Anastasia Hayes. The redshirt junior. Rick Hintz will get another chance to coach her next season after an outstanding junior year. You see her family in attendance. Holly told us about them earlier. Of course, her sister, Aislinn, on this team. Anastasia, a transfer from Tennessee, was the SEC sixth woman of the year, her freshman year. Another foul drawn by Ray Burrell. Burrell is going to shoot two. Burrell has been such a consistent force all season long for Tennessee. And Kelly Harper said even in the preseason, she was the one every single day you knew what she was going to bring. For much of the season, she led the team in scoring until Renaya Davis overtook that top spot. But she has been solid for them all season long. Let's go down to Holly Rowe in Austin. Well, I was checking in with Ray Burrell a couple of weeks ago and talking about why she has turned this corner. She has just really started to blossom. And she said, you know, I've just let the game slow down. I felt like I was forcing possessions, trying too hard. And now I've just got a clear vision of who I am. Be me. Just be myself. Go out and rebound and play defense, and the rest will follow. Burrell called for the travel there. And you could hear... Ray saying, how is that a walk? That's my, been my favorite part about the limited crowds is being able to hear so much more of what the players are saying on the court. <laughs> on the drive, Hayes just blew the bunny, a foul called. On the rebound against Middle Tennessee. Oh, we'll step aside when we come back. We'll take a look at Kelly Harper and her journey home to the Lady Vols. That's next on ABC. Um, it was probably what you think it was. It was really tough. I'm not going to hold back. So, uh, yes, I showed a lot of emotion, but the team responded. We won three straight national championships, three SEC championships. I just feel like Pat would tell me to work hard and do the best job that I could possibly do. Well, Kelly Harper, winner of three titles as a player under Pat okay. Summit. This her first game coaching her alma mater in the NCAA tournament. One of just two coaches to take four different schools to the tournament. Jim Foster is the other. And Rick Insel also a very close relationship with Pat Summit. Pat recruited many of the AAU players that Rick coached in Tennessee throughout the years. And 
Kelly Harper included. And so plenty of connections between those two coaches, Insel and Harper, when it comes to this matchup, Pat Summit in Tennessee. Defense and rebounding, always the cornerstone of the Tennessee program when Pat Summit was the head coach, and that's what's built this lead for Tennessee here in this game. Middle Tennessee, 16 points so far in the second half, Ryan. They had 18 in the first quarter alone. Tennessee defensively has been outstanding in the second half of this game. A 79-55 lead for Tennessee in this first round matchup. The winner will go on to face the winner of Michigan and Florida Gulf Coast. Michigan a two-point lead in that game. Midway through the second quarter, that game on ESPN2. Something to watch, Rebecca. Tight contest between Michigan and Florida Gulf Coast. Yeah, Florida Gulf Coast is a really good team. They're led by Kirsten Bell, who averages 24 points a game. They have attempted more threes than anyone else in women's college basketball this season. Five out. They're going to take a bunch of threes. Watch out for them if they advance over Michigan. Burrell got her hands on it. We saw Davis just check back in. Walker can't finish. And the foul is going to go against Walker. She's called for the charge. You take a look at the difference in points in the paint in the second half. Tennessee a plus 20. They're a plus 8 in second half offensive rebounds. Middle Tennessee, Ryan, in the first half had 18 points in the paint. Off of things like this, the dribble penetration inside, but for the most part in the second half, that has not been there. Fast break points. You just saw the disparity pop up as well in the second half. Chris Kittawa finishes. Chris Kittawa has been a difference maker as well in this second half. She's in double figures now to go with eight rebounds. Good hands, Burrell on the steal. Finding Horston for the finish. And Tennessee absolutely dominating the second half of this first round matchup. And this is exactly what you want in your first round matchup if you're Tennessee in terms of everybody is going to leave this game with a tremendous amount of confidence. They've had contributions on the offensive end from multiple players in terms of their ability to score. They have shared the ball well. It's been an unselfish performance by Tennessee and their defense has been locked down. Burrell on the attack. Trapped. Squeezes it over to Horston. Back to Burrell. Short. And a whistle. It's going to stay right here. Loose ball foul against Middle Tennessee. The first round of the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship on ABC is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Brian? Well, that's a good question. I do carry a, a couple good luck charms in there. It's a little Costanzi, my wallet. A little thick, ready to fall a little apart. Little thick, a little thick. It's not the dollar bills. It's it's the junk in there that makes it thick. <laughs> well, clearly, if you have like good luck charms in your wallet. That's right. A 26-point Tennessee lead, 2.20 to go in this fourth quarter. Hayes in the corner, short. Rebound, grabbed by Horston. Look at that confident one hand chucked down the floor from Jordan Horston to Burrell. Inside of two minutes to go, Tennessee will advance to face the winner of Michigan, Florida, Gulf Coast. And a whistle here against Middle Tennessee. Gives us a chance to let you know that the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship continues today with second round games on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV, or stream games on the March Madness Live app from anywhere. For more information on game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. As Burrell hits the first free throw, 
21 points for Burrell. 24 from Renaya Davis. The dynamic duo has been outstanding for Tennessee. And Rebecca, I love the point you just made about what a confidence booster this game is for a Lady Vols team that could make a lot of noise in this tournament. Yeah, I mean, you can win a game and not feel great afterwards. And in this particular situation, every single player for Tennessee who's been on the floor has contributed in some way. They are going to leave this game with a day off before they play again, everyone feeling confident and ready to go. Renaya Davis, 24 points on 9 of 14 shooting. Burrell with 22 on 8 of 13. Chris Kittawa in double figures. Key in double figures as well. And a dramatic advantage on the glass for Tennessee. A 54 to 21 edge. As Aislinn Hayes gets the three to rim in. 15 points now for Aislinn. Middle Tennessee played very well the first half. This game was tied at halftime. And then Tennessee took over. A reminder. Number two Baylor, number two seed, going up against 15 seed Jackson State here on ABC following the conclusion between Tennessee and Middle Tennessee. And Tennessee, number 21, Tess Darby. How great it is this season to be able to watch every single game. We've got games on ABC. We've got ESPN, ESPN, ESPN2. There's women's basketball everywhere. Great for the women's basketball fan. This the first ever women's NCAA tournament game on ABC. We are so honored to do it and so pumped to have ABC as part of the journey here to watch these incredible young women. And in a year, Rebecca, where things are so much more wide open than you're used to, this is going to be a sensational tournament. Yeah, without question. Who we saw here in the first half of this game, tied in a 3-14 matchup. Shot clock violation. Oh, there is all time at this point. With under 15 seconds remaining, and Tennessee holding a 25-point lead in this first round matchup. Tennessee will improve to 59 and four all time in first and second round games. Hey, short. Tennessee will inbound it one more time. Tied at 39 at the half. Tennessee outscores Middle Tennessee State 48 to 23 in the second half. And the Lady Vols are moving on. They take down Middle Tennessee. 87-62 in this first round matchup.